This is Discern Realities, a Dungeon World podcast. My name is David. And my name is Jason. Well, before we get started with the show today, Jason, I wanted to take a moment to thank all of our listeners who nominated us for the Golden Geek Award on RPGGeek.com. It was a uh, it was a really great surprise for me. I was super excited to see that we had been nominated along with the Gauntlet podcast. Yes, yes, our, our sister podcast. Yeah, and if you all are members in good standing and like Discern Realities, I would appreciate it and love it if you would vote for us to win that award. That would be pretty cool. Uh, you Also the Gauntlet, too. If you want to vote for the Gauntlet podcast, that's, that's okay as well. By all means, please vote for both. Uh, I believe that contest ends. The last day of voting is March 18th, so... Probably when this comes out, right? Yeah, right around when this comes out, you yeah. won't have a whole lot more time to vote. So please, please, please vote for us if you'd like to see us win. The other thing I'd like to mention is our magic item contest. Jason, do you want to run our listeners through the rules of that real quick? Sure. So that's ongoing. Uh, we announced it last episode, but uh, we're taking more submissions. So you can uh, absolutely post your submissions into the comments of the G plus post for this episode. Um, we'll take the posts in either Dungeon World Tavern or on our G plus community. Either is fine. Uh, also, I'm making a slight adjustment. Um, it occurred to me that some people might want a gift certificate to drive through RPG more than Amazon. Given the nature, given the nature of our of our of our interests, right, as role players, so um, I'm okay with either. If you want a twenty five dollar gift card to Red Lobster, I'll do that too. <laughs> it doesn't really matter to me. Um, uh, let's say either drive through or Amazon for the winner. Um, twenty five dollars. It will be announced. Uh, the winner will be announced on episode fourteen, and we'll take submissions until we until we record that episode, basically. So just keep sending those to us. Uh, yeah, that's it. Awesome. And one final announcement. Uh, This episode is going to be a little bit different uh, format-wise. We're going to do two segments before we have our What is About to Happen ongoing AP, so we can have a little little extra time for that today. Uh, And without anything else, I think let's go ahead and move right into our first segment. Our first segment is What Here Is Not What It Appears To Be. Jason, I keep hearing about these things called flags that are being used to... to replace bonds. Uh, and I know that you've used them a little bit, and I'd, I'd love to hear about them. Yeah, so flags, like you mentioned, they are a replacement for bonds. I don't think it's a widespread thing, really. Uh, it's just something that, that I stumbled into. Someone sent me a link to it, and I started using it. And so far, I'm going to give a very strong but somewhat qualified, like, yes, like these are these are pretty cool, right? They're a great replacement. Well, I should probably I should probably mention why why I want to replace bonds in the first place. That's something we've never actually talked about on this cast. Um, I've talked about it at length on the Gauntlet podcast, though. So uh, <laughs> just go pull up go pull up any old episode really of that podcast and, and hear me talk about it. Anytime we mention um, Dungeon World on the Gauntlet podcast, we do. <laughs> it comes up. So my problem with bonds. I think that they tend to get forgotten about, you know, like we write them in the beginning of a session or when you first start, and then they tend to get kind of just dropped by the wayside at the end of the session when you are, quote, resolving them or seeing if you resolve them. It tends to be a little hand wavy, like, or a little unclear what it means to resolve the bond between two characters. It's a particular problem for the gauntlet and the way we run dungeon world, because we have like rotating players all the time. And so your bonds just get like torn to shreds, right? They, they don't last. Like I may have bonds with a guy who played with me for three sessions, but now we're in a whole new series in the gauntlet and that guy's not playing in this one. And so I've got these bonds, I've got all these bonds that don't apply anymore. So they were just never a great fit for us at our table. I know a lot of people have success with them and that's great. If you are like me, though, and you find the bonds are a little wanting, I think flags are a great option. Okay, great. So explain to me how they work exactly. Oh, we should mention that this came from a post on Evil Hats blogs. By It was a post by Rob Donahue. We'll link to it in the, in the, in the, in the show notes and in the uh, G Plus post. But the idea was, and he had expressed like having some of these same uh, reservations about bonds that I just did. And so he created this thing called Flags. And what they are, they are essentially like buttons in a way that that your character can press on another character to earn an XP at the end of the session, okay? So what it is, is you write your flag. It's kind of like a way of saying, like, this is how I want you to interact with my character. These are the. This is how I view my character. This is how I envision my characters behaving. This is how I envision their personality. If you come and 
interact with me in a way that makes me behave in this way, or if you, 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 you trigger this flag, you press this button, then you get an XP. So it's an encouragement to other players to interact with your character in the way you envision your character. Okay, all right. That's pretty cool. So it's, it really reminds me of like in Monster Hearts where they've got strings and in Apocalypse World where you highlight things that you want to see that character do, but kind of more the inverse. Uh, well, it's just really specific, right? Like in like in Apocalypse World and Monster Hearts highlights, you're kind of just saying, oh, I generally want to see you be a bitch, or I generally want to see you act sexy or whatever, right? But this is like, I'm going to very specifically interact with you in this way that you have listed on the, on the flag. So I think a few examples might be instructive here to help sort of clarify what what the flags are, what they do. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, so in the group that I'm running right now that's doing them, one of the characters played by a a player named Alex, he's a like kind of an astrologer character. He's a wizard, but he has kind of like an astrologer, you know, vibe to him. He's always consulting the stars and things like that. His flags are seek my divinations in a moment of uncertainty and trust them implicitly. His other flag is challenge my knowledge and prove that I have more to learn. Okay, so does that make sense? So he's like signaling, I want your character to like come and seek my advice that that's, you know, and then trust what I say. Right. Or I want you to to kind of like call me out and say that I don't really know what I'm talking about. Right. Th- this has been happening like the other players like in, in our session so far, they're 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 paying really close attention to these flags and they're finding opportunities to do this. Okay, because they want to get that XP award at the end. And it's led to some really great role play, right? It's, it's been so good that I haven't even noticed they've been doing it, right? Like, I, I'm not even, like, aware that they're, like, doing the flags thing as they role play, right? Like, until the end, they're like, oh, yeah, I was doing the flag. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, you, you were doing the flags. Awesome. So it, it's led to some really sharp role play. It's, I think it's working out really great. This one's pretty good. Our, our halfling thief, played by uh, Anakit. Let me sneak off on my own, even when the consequences for getting caught may be dire. Or, encourage me to steal a well-guarded item, right? So, Anakin is signaling how he envisions his character participating in the story, right? The only thing that we haven't settled on that isn't covered in this blog post where they discuss flags is how do you do aid and interfere? Because the aid and interfere move requires that you roll... Uh, plus bonds Uh and if you're getting rid of bonds the the question is well what do you do now and so we've settled on you can aid or interfere by just rolling the stat that makes sense based off how you're narrating your aid or interference yeah i mean that honestly makes more sense to me than rolling plus bonds anyways it really does that's another problem i have with bonds it makes no goddamn sense for aid and interfere i think flags are great i think players should give them a shot all right let's go ahead and move on to the next segment Our next segment is what here is useful or valuable to me. Jason, I thought this week that we would pick one of our submissions from the Magic Item Contest. We would read it for the, for listeners and encourage them to write some more and see that, you know, people are doing it and it's it's pretty great. Uh, what item do you like this week? So I decided to, to go with one that was kind of straightforward and simple, uh, but still really interesting. It's called the Tail Bearers Map, and it is from listener Stephen, I believe. And so it it goes, when you make camp, you fold this sheet of blank canvas into thirds and then roll plus wisdom. On a 12 plus, you awake in the morning with a map of the area complete with notable treasures and dangers. On a 10 plus, uh, just the treasures or dangers you choose. On a 7 to 9, you just have the map of the area. And then on a 6 minus, you have just the map of the area, but it may or may not be accurate. Pretty straightforward. I think it's kind of cool. The only thing I would change about it is I would probably make it just a straight roll. I don't think I would add the wisdom modifier at all. And I think the reason why I feel that way is because all you're really doing is just folding a piece of paper. And so that just seems like almost like just chance in a way. Like there's, you know, like I'm not sure like how wisdom comes into it. But otherwise, I think it's pretty cool. The only thing about this, now that I'm thinking about it a little bit more, I'd probably adjust it a little bit so that the six minus is open to the GM. I'm always partial to that anyway. And maybe have the seven to nine result have the possibly inaccurate conclusions. Because otherwise, these are all just kind of like successes, right? I like it. Yeah, that's a good one. Let's go ahead and move on to the next segment. Our next segment is what is about to happen. Okay, so continuing our comic strip AP with Ramshackle Crow, an extra sized AP. Double Let's issue. See. Double issue. Double issue. That's good. Yeah, that's good. When we last saw Ramshackle, uh, everything was going kind of pear shaped in the uh, catacombs beneath the Temple of the Peerless Star. The gigantic Starlight Serpent had 
had shown itself. You were in this this sort of central room in the catacombs, and the and the snake was coming up, and you were perceiving it as sort of absorbing all the light. And we're going to talk about that in a second. And Urbina is currently in the tunnels inside the walls, right? The the little crawl spaces inside the walls. She she was there hiding, um, but you're trying to get her to come out with you, right? To fight the snake, correct? Yeah. That seems like a pretty good place to start. You ready to go? Yeah. You're perceiving that the light is all being absorbed by the snake's mirror-like uh, scales, right? But you start to realize that that it's it's really just like kind of like a it's sort of a hypnosis going on. Like your your vision is sort of tunneling a little bit. The sort of dazzling, um, like glowing radiance of the scales is like is is messing with your head a little bit, right? Give me a plus intelligence roll. Yes, seven. Um, you're going to basically manage to shake off this uh, sort of strange hypnosis that's going on. But it uh, you're going to have a minus one forward as you as you sort of clear your head. Do you want to just describe how that? feels to ramshackle yeah so i'm staring up at the snake it's looming over me very menacingly and the room it seems like it's getting darker and darker and darker and it seems like its eyes are getting brighter and brighter and brighter i i managed to actually think about it and that's what saves me is most creatures that would be in this situation aren't capable of thinking quite like like a man can think and the snake would just devour them instantly if that had been the case but fortunately Fortunately, I managed to think about how snakes act in the wild right when this is happening, and I managed to close my eyes long enough and just roll to roll to my side so that my eyes are no longer locked with his, and the room, as I open my eyes again, is completely lit. Nice. What do you do? I shout to Urbina, Urbina, jump on his back and stab him! Do something! So Urbina, you see Urbina crawling along on the walls, right? Because we know that these this little crawl space is along the walls, and... And yeah, there is there 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 are higher spots uh, with the circular metal grates that she could kind of pop out of and do that if she needed to. Uh, you see her; she is she's looking a little hesitant though. Are you going to try to like put, push her on? Like she doesn't seem <laughs> like she's not sure why she should sacrifice herself for you right now. What do you say? Yeah, I think I'm just having to dodge the snake that's lunging at me right now. As as it's all its attention is focused on me, and I'm just shouting up to her, Urbina, do it, do it now. This is the one chance we have. Roll plus loyalty to force her to do this what's her loyalty her loyalty zero yes no i got a five uh she's not having it and in fact yeah she's hesitating uh she's hesitating and she's not into it and i think you're looking at her and you're like you know come on urbina like help help and the snake just like lat like just strikes like really fast at you um he strikes out and like slams his body and pins you up against the wall and just sinks his fangs into you you take a d10 plus two Ugh. Okay, so that's five. He's got you kind of pinned up against the wall. And, I mean, it's very recall. He's very thick. He's thick like a tree, and so his body's kind of pressed you up against the wall. And you're you're he's kind of reeling around to like to take another strike at you with his fangs. What do you do? So I'm pinned. Yep. Okay. Are my arms free? Sure. What are you gonna try to do? I'm gonna try and pull out one of my throwing daggers supplied with uh, the sleeping oil of Tadget, and I'm going to try stabbing the snake repeatedly to try and knock it out before it can kill me. Okay, nice. Defy danger strength. It's a six! <laughs> oh no. I'll let you describe ineffectively stabbing at the snake. How's that go? <sighs> the dagger is just too small. His scales are too thick. It won't pierce. And he's got you pressed up, and he kind of, he sunk his teeth into you once, like just a quick strike that like punctured your, like kind of punctured, punctured you on the shoulder a little bit. Now that he's got you pinned, he's like kind of taking measure of like where precisely he needs to strike, right? And uh, and he does. He goes like straight at like your head and shoulders. Take another d10 plus two. Ugh. Oh, seven. Oh no. I'm out of hit points. Oh no. Oh no. Urbina, why? <laughs> okay. Describe the black gate. Ramshackle doesn't feel as the fangs puncture him again, and the upper half of his body is is inside of the snake's mouth. All he all he can see is his old master, Cat's Paw. He is across a river. It's the it's a river from his childhood, and he's looking at him with sinister eyes, and he's he's beckoning him forward with with one hand and he's saying it's time to come back home now time to steal for me again go ahead and roll last breath three 
Oh no. Um, go ahead and pass me on Black Gate. What does it look like? Ramshackle tries to turn and run, and then out of his old master's hands, chains come flying, wrapping around Ramshackle. Oh my god, okay. Dragging him across. <gasps> oh my god. He screams as the snake swallows him whole. Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, we have a little perspective shift here uh, with Urbina Castafiel. Urbina, you are in the in the in the crawl space inside the walls. You you are at one of the round metal grates in the wall that allow you to look out into the central chamber, and you see you see the snake attacking Ramshackle, and he was calling out for you, but you hesitated, and the snake. Uh, just bit down on Ramshackle, and you see Ramshackle's legs twitching, and you feel like that's probably the end of Ramshackle Crow. Um, what do you do? So, I shouldn't have. I should have gone out there. I should have saved him. This is all my fault. This is all my fault. All for all for this treasure to eggs. Was it worth it? These these thoughts are racing through my mind, but my hands are still swift to action as I can no longer hesitate. I'm drawing my sword, and I'm getting ready to jump on the snake's back as it's distracted with with that unfortunate ramshackle. Uh, do a backstab. <sighs> Six. <laughs> oh, no. You, you jump down, and you attempt to slam your sword to the back of the snake's head, but your sword is not able to pierce the hard, mirror-like scales of uh, of the snake's skin and you you kind of just like tumble down to the ground i think at that point the snake like kind of lifts up and you see just like a spray of viscera as the lower half of ramshackle's body like falls to the ground and the snake has the upper half kind of in his mouth and uh swallows it down what do you do right now uh, your your sword like kind of like got knocked out of your hand is it across the and is across the room and you can't get to it what do you do i think this is this is it i can't i can't stand up to this snake it's too strong i have to get out of here i'm going to try and flee do a defy danger dexterity to essentially run away from the snake four you make a go for the door and the snake the snake is quite big and its body like consumes a lot of the room right and so with a quick movement he can kind of position his coils like in front of you and he does he he does so and he blocks off the door and he's rearing back for a strike the central area uh the the grate that he popped out of in the middle that's that's open you could dive down there that's that's a possibility um just just so you're aware you're starting to get though a little um the sort of strange dazzling effect on the scales of the light as he moves is becoming really intense and i'm going to give you a minus one forward as you kind of cope with that as well so what do you do now i'm going to try and roll along the floor into the into the hole to try and avoid it as best i can all right, do another Defy Danger Dexterity. Six. You do not make it. Uh, the snake strikes out and and grasps you like a like sinks his fangs uh, into your leg. You take a D10 plus two. Ten. <clears throat> you are bleeding out. Uh, you cry out. What are you thinking right now? What's going on through Urbina's head? This is just all kinds of wrong. Like, I never should have come to this temple. I never should have tried to seek out this this mirrored egg. This was just the worst job that I could have ever taken. I have a question. What were you seeking the mirrored egg for in the first place? It was going to be used for a ritual. And this ritual would have, you know, it would have been really important to help uh, Urbina's family. They suffer some kind of curse and this egg was supposed to help with that. But she didn't think that it would be the death of her and the death of, you know, a, a potential ally and friend. You are... On the ground, uh, you're, you've taken a nasty gash, uh, two big giant puncture wounds uh, in your in your thigh, and then and actually they're kind of like big nasty flesh wounds as the snake kind of pulls his fangs out of your out of your you know out of your thigh, right? Yeah, um, I think while the snake is th- that close to me with its fangs still in my in my leg, I'm gonna try and and pull out a dagger and stab it in the eye in an attempt to like blind it so you can get away. Yeah. Do a defy danger intelligence for quick thinking. All right, that's a nine. Go ahead, describe blinding it. I'm screaming out in pain as it sinks its fang into my leg, but 
I realize that this is my this might be my last chance and as it stares at me with its with its snake eyes I pull a dagger off of my shoulder and just jam it straight into its eye as it's so close to me and uh, it rears back and you see that there's like just a slight gap but you know between like its coils and the door that you might be able to jump through um, the only way you're going to be able to do that though is if you basically drop all your gear to just like like just just drop your gear and like dive through this little like gap in the door. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna go for it. Do a defy danger dexterity again. Four. You do not make it. You run up. Uh, you stuck. Snake whips around and like and uh the snake whips around and he just sort of like positions you to basically like coil you. Like he just coils your body up into his into his right. You like he's got you held tight and he's getting ready to squeeze. You need to escape now. This is incredibly perilous. Like, I think this is going to send you straight to last breath if you don't escape. What do you do? My pack is still laying near enough that I can that I can still reach it. And as the snake uh, has me in its coils and it and it opens its mouth to try, try and strike down at me, I'm going to try and throw my entire pack into its mouth. And like I tried to knock out uh, Ramshackle earlier... I have some more oil attached. I've got three applications of it in that pack. And if it swallows it, it should pass out really quickly. Defy danger dexterity. Snake eyes. Oof. Describe the black gate for Urbina Castafiel. I think for Urbina, her black gate is... She's at her ancestral home. And it has many, many rooms... They're, they're all, uh, they're all filled with, with, with people from her past, people who have, who have already succumbed to whatever vile plague she was trying to get this egg to save them from. She sees grandfathers and and uncles and cousins, and they're all there. And, uh, and they're kind of like beckoning her in, like it's, um, like it's welcome. And then she sees her mother is actually there and her, she didn't think that her mother was was gone she thought that her mother was still was still here but it it appears that she may have succumbed to it as well and her mother's welcome is just almost too much we're going to end the session there i'm going to have you make the roll next session all right listeners well our last question is who's really in control here that fucking snake it would seem (laughs) (laughs) i'm pretty sure that snake's really who's in control here i think it's the starlight serpent um okay (laughs) uh in fact it's the gauntlet gaming community go find us on g plus it's awesome we're also we're also on twitter at gauntlet rpg thanks listeners thanks listeners that's our show the listeners an extra sized AP <laughs> <laughs> you went and died oh. it's so sad I feel so sad <laughs>